And this is a history of Saps, Blackjacks, and Slung Shots, and I got to see two Native American Slung Shot War Clubs in a row, and they're slightly different, so I, I like both of them. <laughs> but this one gives me a good excuse to talk about one specific configuration. I don't know if it is that configuration, to be honest. We'll talk about that in the video, but it's a, it might be as close as I get, so let's take the opportunity. Much like with the last one, and I'll have the link to the last one in the description here, you've got a very short, flat connection, which attaches the round stone to the wooden shaft. So the weapon is a flail. It is definitely going to be used with a swing motion. You can't jab too effectively with this. I mean, you could, but this is all about getting an arc going with your arm. The load is consistently described uh, as weighing about two pounds, and uh, as you guys know from my sap videos and blackjack videos, that's more than enough to get the job done. In fact, it might be a little bit of overkill. One shot to the head is all that's going to be required. So here's another view of the connection, and the interesting thing here, as well as always, is how crazy it looks, right? That giant spherical load and then that little short flat connection. But in addition to that, notice again how, here we go, it's two bands. And that was much more obvious on the last one, the last version that we saw of this weapon. Here it's almost hard to tell, but you see the thread there, and I don't know why exactly that's necessary. It's interesting, but you always see that, well, always, in the examples I've seen. And here's a great view of the the business end. Look at the wear and tear on that surface, <clears throat> especially on the right. Uh, I think this one was uh, a trusty companion for a long time. The warrior who owned this might have some gruesome stories to tell. And there was one unique feature here, which I wish this was in better focus, I'm sorry, but it's the only picture I've got of it, which was that. The stone is actually exposed, and I don't know if that was purposeful, or, I mean, it looks like it, right, because it's such a perfect circle, but anyway, uh, I got to touch the actual stone load, which I've never done before, so the uh, person with me kind of laughed, but it might be the only time that ever happens. So, check out the bottom end here, the tail, and uh, that's a pun, because I think this weapon might be made out of a cow's tail, and this is what I was talking about earlier in the video. The typical Apache version of this weapon was made by splitting a cow tail lengthwise, inserting the stone on the larger end, then leaving a little bit of space between the stone and the shaft, the wooden shaft that you also inserted, and then sewing the whole thing up. It was specifically mentioned more than once that they would leave the hair on the bottom end, so you can kind of see that there with those fibers, right? I mean, I don't know what else that would be. And as is typical, we've got some decorative flourishes, especially on the bottom. So you can see the beads there, and those are in great shape. Also, those kind of tassels, those metal ones, uh, the version of this weapon that I own, which is not a flop head, uh, has the same, so that's pretty typical. I saw one sheath as part of this collection that used thimbles, like actual thimbles, for that purpose. So I thought that was cool, something they probably traded for and you know, thought looked great. Just take a look at how odd this image is for a second. Appreciate that. I mean, it looks like something alien. But it's just a part of this classic weapon. Thanks as always.